San Diego has always been known for its scenic waterfront. Its nearly perfect climate also makes it a popular sailing and tourist destination. But what tourists never see is a small neighborhood hidden away between the Coronado Bridge and a large waterfront industrial complex. Barrio Logan is three miles long and just six blocks wide. This is one of San Diego's poorest Mexican-American communities, and its residents have long been the targets of environmental discrimination. Forty years ago, the city of San Diego tried to force people out of Barrio Logan to make room for commercial development. Zoning laws were changed overnight. Small factories, junkyards, and auto wreckers were encouraged to move into the residential neighborhood. The community was outraged. The pounding every day, smash, smash, smash. Our house is slowly cracking, the, the walls in our house, the, the paint peeling is falling off. This used to be a, a very nice area at one time until somehow somebody said it would be a nice place to make junkyards. Junkyards, industry, everything started happening. My community started kind of falling apart. But most families were strongly attached to their neighborhood and refused to move. It didn't take long for city planners to try another tactic. They cut off Barrio Logan from the rest of San Diego by making it the site of an expanded highway system and a new bridge. Once again, the neighborhood was under attack. This time by enormous amounts of auto emissions. Salvador Torres, a local artist, remembers the community's frustration. Here we are, we're faced with pollution of our community. Uh, the freeways coming through, the bridge. Suddenly industry starts developing here and with this comes the idea of our community being assaulted with toxins. Unable to stop the construction, anger surfaced. And when the city reneged on its promise to build a park under the bridge, the people of Barrio Logan demonstrated. They formed a human chain around the site and refused to leave until the city gave them their park. It was the first time that we had all come together in a sense of unity for ourselves and our community. Other, other than that, it had been very isolated. We believed it, we said it, we taught our children, but we didn't vocally come out. For the, I think for the first time in my life, I saw some people that were very, you could see it in them, ded dedicated, committed, believing in something. We shall continue to live, my brother. We shall continue to fight, my friend. After a two-week standoff, the demonstrators won their recreational area, which they proudly called Chicano Park. Today, the pylons that support the bridge are covered with murals that celebrate Barrio Logan's Latino culture. Chicano Park, to me, represents the struggle of our community. This idea was to develop monumental murals that would represent our history, that would represent the feelings that we have growing up in this community, our successes and our failures, our victories. Though Barrio Logan won its battle for Chicano Park, it still struggles in its fight for clean air. Each day, hundreds of diesel trucks, nearly 300,000 cars, and dozens of factories operate in and around this residential neighborhood. Studies have been done across the country showing that people of color in low-income communities are much more subject to being uh, the targets of industrial 
sources moving into those neighborhoods than into other neighborhoods. This has resulted in a variety of health impacts. Approximately 20% of the children in Barrio Logan have either asthma or probable asthma. The failing health of the children sparked a new community protest. This time, they went after Master Plating, a factory located in the residential heart of Barrio Logan that used hexavalent chromium, a known cancer-causing chemical. Now, this is 10 News Nightcast. Health officials have issued a stern warning. Local television stations documented the community's fight. Dangerous toxins are raising the risk of cancer for people who live in Barrio Logan. You cannot see it, you can't smell it, but it can kill you. It's called hexavalent chromium. The family that lives next door to master plating here in the 2100 block of Newton Avenue has a son who is forced to use an inhaler several times a day to alleviate severe breathing problems. Common sense tells us that a plating shop does not belong next to a home or next to a school. What we're trying to do now is to uh, take the proper enforcement actions against the, the violator, which in this case is master plating. The company blamed for causing the pollution is being shut down. Master plating is killing us. The refrain for a decade by residents of Barrio Logan. I'm happy for my family, but mainly my community. Because finally, after hundreds of meetings, scores of studies, dozens of protests, master plating is being shut down. This is what good politics is. You know, community and, and, and our representatives, everybody. This is what it means to finally get something done working together. A few days after master plating closed down, the people of Barrio Logan gathered to celebrate the shutting down of a factory that had been poisoning their community for decades. The celebration is to mark the closing of master plating and the reduction in toxic emissions from that facility. We're happy to report that there will be a 75% decrease in chrome levels at the houses around master plating, and that results in a much less of a cancer risk to residents in this immediate area. For the people of Barrio Logan, this victory is one more milestone in their struggle for environmental justice their struggle against discriminatory zoning regulations, and their struggle to create Chicano Park. <laughs>